Hello everybody, today we'll talk about how to interpret spectrograms. So a spectrogram is a visual representation of spectrum of frequencies of a signal as it varies with the time. Now basically a spectrogram is an extended version of a spectrograph. Now what is a spectrograph? A spectrograph is a graph of amplitude versus frequency. Now if you take a signal and perform the Fourier transform, what do you get is a spectrograph. A spectrograph tells you what frequencies are present in a given signal and what impact each of those frequencies are making, that is their amplitude. Now, if you want to learn more about spectrograph, you can check the link in the description below. Now, a spectrogram is an extended version of spectrograph because it gives you idea about the third dimension. So a spectrogram tells you information about amplitude frequency and the third dimension is time or it can be RPM in case of automotive acoustics. Now, a spectrogram is referred to as color map or Campbell plot because it's a plot of, you know, two axes and the third axis is in a color scale. Now, we'll get to those details later in this video. So, how was a spectrogram plotted? So, to create a spectrogram, several Fourier transforms are performed at multiple instances of time. So it is exactly the same as how a spectrograph is plotted. A spectrograph is plotted by taking the Fourier transform once, but in case of spectrogram, you're taking it at multiple instances of time. And then you're combining all together to create a three-dimensional plot, which is a spectrogram. Now think of it this way. The best analogy would be that you're taking, clicking multiple pictures and then combining all those pictures to make a video. So those each individual pictures can be thought of like, you know, like a, a spectrograph. And then you combine all those things together to create a spectrogram. Now, usually the spectrogram is a three-dimensional plot. So you have like, let's say, amplitude, frequency, and time. But it'll be difficult to visualize things in 3D. Maybe it's not easy for everybody. But then there is a workaround so we can have like two axes, which represents, you know, time and frequency. And the third axis is not, you know, really an axis, but rather it's in a color scale. So the end result is you're going to have a 2D plot, but then you're going to have a third dimension as in a color scale. So, you know, it makes it easy to visualize something in 2D than in 3D for most people. So the difference between spectrogram and spectrograph. Well, as you know, spectrograph is just a plot of amplitude versus frequency. It's 2D, whereas a spectrogram, it goes to the extent of giving the third dimension. So spectrograph has a limitation because it can only give you information in 2D. It can't say at what instances of time was a frequency present or absent. So that's where the spectrogram takes, you know, takes a precedence. It, it has more use. So this is an example of a signal in the time domain. I've intentionally included three different pure tones in the signal. So the first uh, 0 to 0.5 second is 500 hertz. 0.5 to 1 second is 1000 hertz and 1 to 1.5 is 1500 hertz. So you can listen to the tone now. So as you listen, there are three tones in three instances of time. If you take a spectrograph or a 2D plot, you're going to get what frequencies are present and what are their amplitudes. So this graph is good, but it's not good enough because it doesn't tell at what instance of time was 1 kilohertz present. You know, from the from the trace, we can see that, okay, one kilohertz is present from 0.5 to 1. I mean, this is a simple signal, so we can easily say that. But if it's a complex signal, and if you just see this, you can't really make out at what instance of time was that particular frequency present. You know, complex uh, noise analysis, when you have lots of, you know, a wide band noise, and then there is one tonal component, you can't really go back to the, the signal and check where was it present. And you can't see and conclude here as well. So this is where a spectrogram uh, is more useful. Now, if you look at the spectrogram, you'll see something like this. It's pretty easy to see that, okay, 500 hertz was present between 0 and 0 0.5 second, and then 1 kilohertz is present between 0 0.5 and 1.0 second. So it makes things easier, right? Like, again, this is a simple example, but if there is a complex noise, the spectrogram does clearly point out at what particular instance of time was this frequency present. Now, there is another use case that I found out. So let's say there is a track. I mean, in this case, it's a piano track or a melody track. And then there is an intentional impulse, something that's not wanted there. But it, it, it so happened that it's there. Now, 
it's not intentional. Maybe some case sometimes you're like editing tracks or working with signals and sometimes it just so happens that you cut something or there is some bumps. So it just happens like you get up, uh, get an impulse. So what to do in that case? So let's listen to the track first. So I hope you listen to the track and you're able to listen to the impulse as well. And if you take a spectrograph or a 2D plot, you're going you're gonna to see something like this on the right. So now you can't really make out, um, you know, what is the contribution of the piano in this case and where does the impulse really fit in. Now you can look at the trace. Uh, I mean, this case is pretty obvious that there's a click for experienced users. It'll be pretty obvious. You can also listen to the track. But then there's a more easier way for everybody is to look at the spectrogram. Now, if you look at the spectrogram, you will have the time axis on the top. And you can see that there's one single line, you know, you know, like that's really short in the time, but it's really broad in the frequency. I mean, like it goes from the bottom all, all the way to the top of the graph. So that is an impulse. And you can quickly know that, OK, at this particular instant is this impulse present. So we go back to the time trace and say, OK, at this particular impulse, let's remove that impulse. So it's a very quick way of, you know, checking and concluding to remove the impulse. This is just one use case. I'm sure there are a lot of many use cases. So to conclude, spectrogram is a visual representation of spectrum of frequencies. A spectrogram is way better than a spectrograph because it gives you information about time, frequency and amplitude, three dimensions. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.